Hello, everyone. Uh, we are back after uh, a bit of a break. I think everyone needed a, some rest. Siddharth was uh, tired uh, handling me and Dan, and Dan was tired handling me and Siddharth, and I was just tired in general. But uh, we are back. We are back. And uh, how, how are you guys? Let's uh, give everyone a recap of uh, what's happening and um, how's everyone uh, doing. I think, uh, Dan, you might be doing well, great. Mate, I'm actually feeling much better after Australia's ODI, uh, the first match between <laughs> Australia and the West Indies. Um, <laughs> playing for points, it suddenly means something, um, which yeah. is good to see. But, um, you know, after watching that ODI, uh, uh, that T20 series, um, it was a bit disappointing, you know, the the um, the, the young, the um, big bash stars, just there were more... Uh, or, or more sizzle and not enough state, to my liking. Um, but the West Indies kind of showed good. why they play big bash and not at the top level. Some of them <laughs> didn't they? Yeah, but um, you know, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see um, the side sort of bounce back in the ODI series, and then obviously with the hundred coming up and um, the big one, England versus India. There's exciting times ahead. Yeah. Um, so that's how do you feel about the hundred concept though? Like something which uh, has been like. It's it's a bit confusing, isn't it? I mean, it's not. Uh, it it wouldn't be something which will immediately go. Yes, this yeah. is the solution to something. But then, if you think about it, and like, I've spent like hours and hours just trying to figure out how what's the best way to approach if you were a captain or something. And yeah. it's it's a very weird one. How do you feel about the hundred concept? Though? And I'll come well, back to you, Dan, as well. Yeah. Let's start with Dan, actually. Yeah. 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 How do you feel about I'm that? Say this. Look, it's just not uh, cricket. It's just a, a, a bit of a desperate move by, um, you know, the ECB, and that's fine. But look, fellas, I think we just come together. Instead of the 100, you know, we, we, we can have the 60, you know, backyard cricket. We'll call it the 60. We'll <laughs> implement the one hand, one bounce rule. I, I mean... Yeah. Uh, it's, it, look, at the end of the day, I mean, it, 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 it's it's an attempt by the ECB to sort of try and cash in on the IPL because they didn't believe in the IPL when it started um, yeah. and the concept of T20 cricket. So they're trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But uh, any team that's sort of coached by Warney and owned by Ed Sheeran has my vote. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be some combination, of us, isn't it? Like, yeah, like yeah, the beauty and the beast kind of thing. Like, how, how do you feel about that whole format? See that? Like, would you yeah. be watching it? That that's more important. Would well, you be, be watching it? it? But I'm just not sure. I can't call a batsman a batsman. I can't call a bowler a bowler. An over isn't. There's no overs. There's no overs um, anymore. Yeah, there's, there's no balls, overs. Yes. You know, we call them number yeah. of set of balls. I think I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they even calling it? It's just a weird. Thing. I think yeah. See, as far as the format is concerned, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm not going to deny that. I'm pretty excited. But yeah, uh, I think how the fans will adapt it, or you know, how the fans will actually see the format going, I think it's still a very, uh, it's still a very long shot. We'll probably have to take it, you know, match by match, and maybe, uh, you know, maybe one season, you know, uh, when the first season finishes. Then probably you know I'll be able to uh, speak uh, pretty well, or maybe you know I'll be able to present my opinions well as to you know where the format is uh, going or how well it was presented or what were the drawbacks and all of that stuff. So yeah, I think it's still uh, it's still a waiting game. Yeah, I mean England, right? So the, um, the India England Test series. Mm. Is is it is it overlapping though? I've not checked the schedule. Is it overlapping so, with the uh, India England uh, series? Starting before a major test series, I sort of have doubts, um, especially mm. one of that of, of that magnitude. And then, yeah, um, it, it'll be interesting to see which sort of England side actually plays in that first test. Will will those will those test players sort of be forced to choose out of the hundred or test crickets? No, I'm I think sure. they, they'll, they'll probably have to, have to, right? The yeah. test cricket thing, <laughs> like, have to. There's no option there. Like, there would be a massive, massive backlash if they don't. So, I don't think they have an option. England, England, England have already announced their squad for the first two tests. Oh, yeah. And as expected, I think uh, we they, they have, you know, all the big names. With a couple yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, let's say the likes of Chris Wokes is missing out because of a heel injury. And uh, I'm also pretty surprised with the exclusion of Moin Ali. I think he has been a force uh, when uh, you know whenever he's played against India. 
yes, uh, you know, picked all those crucial wickets, be it the 2014 series or 2018 one. He also did well in the in one test that he played at, uh, I think, Chennai before uh, he went back home due to personal reasons uh, earlier this year. But I think, yeah, overall, uh, yes, the tournament is overlapping with uh, the England-India series. But I think as far as England um, England's test team is concerned, I don't think the likes of maybe the Josh Butler, Ben Stokes, who are, you know, all format specialists, they definitely, you know, they would be, they would prefer, you know, to play the test series against India because it's, it is, you know, it is possibly one of the, I think, uh, uh, CB yeah, challenges for them actually. Though. Yeah, it will be in the spotlight for this uh, during the cycle of the World Test Championship. And uh, England yeah. would want to win it, definitely, because heading into the Ashes, they would want that momentum. Yeah, probably the last uh, big test series they have before the Ashes as well, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, so that kind of uh, plays into it. Uh, but speaking of India, and uh, they have done a very interesting thing, haven't they? Like uh, sending uh, not a B, no, you can we call it a weaker team if you're actually winning uh, against an international team? So let's just call it India B, if that's the best way to put it. So India sent uh, their B team to Sri Lanka now and they are 2 nil up. Uh, the second game, they probably should not, I mean, Sri Lanka should not be losing from whatever position they were in, but they did. And that kind of shows how good the the Indian team actually played as well, right? So uh, I'll come to you, Dan, with this. Like, would you see, like, in coming in the coming years, with the amount of cricket which is being played by the top players, would you see uh, teams like India, teams like Australia, uh, England, for that matter, sending their B teams to play uh, the lesser teams? If let's well, put it that way, for politically yeah, correct absolutely. reasons, the yeah, lesser teams. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, cricket's evolved. We're looking at more games uh, over a shorter time period as well. Um, you know, we're looking at overlapping T20 um, and ODI series. Um, Australia have already had that. Uh, we're sending, um, organizing two squad one for South Africa and one for New Zealand. Um, but it's an exciting time. You, you're going to get your, um, you know, you, you're going to see more players at that international level. Whether or not they cut it at international level is another thing. Um, but there's going to be more opportunities across different formats. Um, but I think which is going to come to shove when uh, we have, say, a Virat Kohli or a Ben Stokes or a Steve Smith choose IPL cricket over a test series. Um, yeah. That's going to cause some issues in the future. And that's something, you know, boards need to sort of work with teams to resolve and the players as well. They need to be buying across the board. Otherwise, uh, we're, we're always going to have that doubt in the back of our mind. But eventually, one day, we will find that one player who will choose IPL cricket over test cricket. Yeah. I mean, they do get paid uh, big money for uh, playing IPL, right? So it's like a shorter format, same amount of money, and you can prolong your career. So that's there. Uh, but, uh, Stad, would you be in favor of teams sending out their a weaker national team to let's say uh, Sri Lanka, let's say um, West Indies, maybe Zimbabwe, Bangladesh, whoever that could well, be. Yeah, but it's would interesting you... that you raise that point. Australia just announced uh, a T20 mm. for Bangladesh. Yes. Yeah. So um, at, at that point, you're going to see other players sort of have to step in. And I mean, you know, players will get injured. Um, you want to protect your 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 top line players for something like an Ashes series or like an India series. Um, All the world, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. but you would be in favor of that. See that? Like, how do you feel? See, about I, think, that? Uh, I think the most teams will will not have any other option because see, if you look mm -hmm. at you know how cricket has progressed in the last 15, 20 years. Let's say you know just before the IPL. Almost every team, uh, or let's say before the advent of you know the IPL, the T20 cricket, and all the various T20 leagues across the world, uh, there was a time you know during the year, maybe two, two and a half months, or maybe three months, or maybe at max three or three and a half months, uh, the teams used to get enough time to rest, to you know just go out with their families. They, they do, get, they still you know do get that time to just uh, to be at home and be with their families. But however, you know, uh, let's say you know let's take a, let's take the example of Rashid Khan. Uh, just a few days back, he made the statement that, uh, you know, in the last five years, he has been at home for just 25 days. Now, that's not even a month. 
so mm-hmm. i think with the the coming of t20 cricket and all the t20 leagues yes cricket uh, has uh, they have been a lot uh, you know lot more number of matches lot more t20 matches but uh, yeah and i think at the very same time just to protect the players from injuries and just to give them enough rest i think the boards will have no other option than to select uh, a second 11 rather than you know i would say an india b team or probably an england b team uh, to probably maybe uh, go to, uh, let's say you know when you are touring the likes of maybe sri lanka or maybe the uh, zimbabwe the, the teams who are actually struggling a bit in international cricket because you you would want that you know your best players uh, be fit and ready and even rested you know uh, come the world cup or come um, any other important series so yeah i think that's probably going to become a norm and also i think uh, one more thing uh, because of covid we don't know you know when there would be a situation that player that when you are on a tour whether when would you be allowed to go out uh, for a meal or maybe in all of that stuff in in to- totally uh, i would say not in just you know phases but totally when the mask- masks are going to get removed the quarantine period is very very hard on players because they just have to be in their room and improvise with whatever facilities they have in order to practice or maybe you know uh, to do that gym routine and all of that stuff so yeah i think uh, with the covid also till the time you know we all have to let's say wear masks and uh, just be in that quarantine phase uh, i'm sure you know we we will see a lot of second 11s uh, playing against probably the first choice eleven of some teams who aren't really featuring well in the international arena yeah but if you think about it right like let's say sri lanka for that matter now and even england uh, they beat pakistan england were not yeah uh, their full strength india is not their full strength against sri lanka and they're still winning but see from a from the other end though let's say like i think uh, did I, i'm not sure if he actually said that but arjun ranatunga actually took a bit of a yes 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 um, offense that india actually didn't send their main team but the thing is let's say if they did send their first team by pure just basic logic this would that would be a stronger team than whatever they have sent so if they're losing to this one they would have lost badly to that one and this at least makes it like a relatively competitive game so if you're on the other side let's say if you're a zimbabwe or if you're a sri lanka or you're even let's say some other afghanistan or something who are not that strong would you want to face these kind of players or would you rather have the first 11 and just go uh, against the best uh, possible outcome uh, team that that it can be put out like if you have to face the b team or the first team if you were uh in sri lanka's place who who would you rather prefer though having visit your country for a tour i think yeah see if if i am the captain of a zimbabwe team or maybe let's say even afghanistan or even sri lanka who are struggling nowadays i wouldn't mind playing any team i would say be it england <laughs> second 11 or india's second 11 because see, let's be yeah. let's be very very clear okay sri lanka do get a lot of uh, you know series to play be it at home or overseas because yeah. of their you know good fpc schedule but at the very same time you know the likes of zimbabwe and afghanistan and even ireland who just recently defeated south africa in an odi i think they hardly get to play any series and that is where you know if uh, let's say i am the captain of any of the respective teams i would actually motivate my boys and tell them that yes you know it does not matter you know which opposition you are playing be it their first mm-hmm. 11 or the second 11 we are getting to play and that that is something that the icc should actually be looking at because see if you look at the icc world super league the odi super league almost every series you know holds a lot of importance even the dead rubbers in a series do hold the importance because you want to secure maximum points before heading into the 2023 world cup and that's going to put you you know in an advantageous situ- situation so yeah i think it's just about playing more and more rather than just looking at uh, the team you know whether it's a first 11 or a second 11 because even the lesser ranked teams they want to do well they want to win so yeah i think that uh, that shouldn't be any concern for uh, you know such teams because even if uh, the sec- even if you know the top nations the top ranked nations they send their b team or the second 11 to maybe the likes of uh, when they're touring ireland or maybe afghanistan or for that matter maybe even zimbabwe uh, i think the focus is still on winning so yeah there are uh, there are certain uh, experienced players or even and it's a combination of good experience and uh, youngsters so yeah i think it does not matter it's just about you know uh, having a good cricket match or a good series with just two teams fighting out for it yeah i mean dan do you see like uh, coming to you uh, do you see 
uh, maybe in like a few years time where you will actually have two teams from the same nation playing in the same tournament like because let's say uh, this actually happens and there's uh, there's actually a provision to have um, india a india b australia a australia b and let's say the there is such a huge talent pool in those both the teams that they can actually go ahead and play let's say uh, international tri series or a quadrangle series or something like that do you see two teams from the same nation playing against each other in a same tournament would that be something that uh, appeals to you as a fan would you be some open to something well, like that it was it's funny you mentioned that it was actually tried um in the early 90s when australia yeah. introduced the like australia a team so you yeah. had uh, guys like Damian Martin sort of captaining that side. So if I, 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 long term, it doesn't work. It, it simply mm. doesn't work. So, I mean, if you had two teams from the same country playing in the final of a tournament, that would be an absolute disaster and it shouldn't yeah. be allowed to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that, that I think that it was uh, West Indies uh, who were a part of that uh, series as well. West Indies and I think... not sure if it was england or someone else but it was definitely west indies was one team australia and australia a was the other and i remember michael bowen went from team the main team to the a team and i think in the last final or something paul rifle was or was it someone else that's what right, i remember yeah. some, paul rifle team. was actually brought yeah, in rifle, yeah wow. but yeah that kind of controversy like you said uh, it can't be uh, a sustainable model it can be probably to have uh, intra squad intra country three way team a team b team c i think india does that i'm not sure if that happened last year because of covid or the year before but india has those uh, tournaments the to challenger get... trophy or the deoda trophy india blue india red india green yeah also, they just you know, give the likes of colors. a b c yeah that that, that yeah. and i've covered i've covered actually a couple of uh, these uh, series in the past So yeah, it's, yeah. I mean that that's a possibility, but uh, like Dan mentioned, probably not for the international stage. I would I would really want it to happen just to see the chaos which where do, happens. Where do you yeah. fit it? Where, where do you really fit it? You know, over you know over mm-hmm. the year you have a lot of international series for uh, for almost every team. Then you have the IPL, CPL, BPL, even the Bangladesh yeah. Premier League, Dhaka Premier League. So there are global T20 Canada. There are a lot of T20 mm-hmm. leagues happening. Where do you fit it? You know, where do you get that time? The players are not even yeah. getting enough time to rest. so how do you really fit you know <laughs> such series absolutely you want I mean, you probably need to play like two different series then the winners of those individual series they play a final or something i don't know i mean that that's something which if if anyone's watching and they have a good idea to fit this please uh, comment and let yeah. us know about that um but uh, moving to a more uh, i don't know i don't know if we should call it a serious matter or not but justin langer uh, the australian coach right i think he got some pretty uh, good not not good like a good amount of feedback if that's the best way to put it uh, maybe a, a bit of negative aspect to it or, and but there's a vibe that the players uh, were slightly uh, not able to approach him or maybe put out their views um, during the india series and even after that there was a anonymous feedback which was given to the assistant coach and stuff like that uh, but coming to the point of it is let's say if australia do not do well in the coming world cup uh, they'll probably not sack him right after the world cup because the ashes is coming but let's say that uh, after the ashes as well uh, regardless of the res- result doesn't need to be a, a loss in the ashes to affect this but uh, dan as a as an aussie fan like would you uh, get rid of langer and langer and just move to the next phase of australian cricket if uh, no, the t20 world cup doesn't go like you can you can we can they'll, we'll forgive the world cup in um in the uae but you can't lose the matches at home that that, mm-hmm. that that's it's just sacrilegious like and heads will roll starting with langer um yeah. as much as he is a great coach and you know he he is like a, a very very good coach um you can't lose that ashes at home and i think he'll be a different style of coach with divinito um michael divinito back as a batting coach um you know having that extra support there i think you're going to see 
a much better batting performance from Australia. I mean, Divinito was the guy that was credited with turning Steve Smith into Steve Steve Smith. So I I think um, if, if people won't worry as much about the T Twenty World Cup as they will about the Ashes. Um, for Aussies, it's about the Ashes, and if you lose the Ashes, um, you know they'll be very unforgiving. Yeah, I mean that's that's like the final. Uh, tick mark to for him to uh, go in that case uh, but uh, so that would you let's say hypothetically let's assume Australia uh, go out of the at the quarter final stage of the uh, world cup and ashes is a draw would you go uh, and go away I, I don't know it's like I mean if Australia go out of the world cup I think it's a bonus for us um, you know, you get your mm -hmm. players back for the Afghanistan test. I think, uh, yeah. you know, you get them back for the for the Ashes series. I don't think the Ashes. I don't see the Ashes series being a draw simply because England's batting is so poor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their, their their bowling is very much their strength. Um, you know, they very much rely on Butler and Stokes as as the all rounders. I don't think Roots in the top four batsmen in the world anymore. I don't think you can be putting there. Um, you know, he. He'd still be in the top ten, but he's he's not in that you know that that Virat Kohli Steve yeah, invincible Smith. invincible uh, no, he, bracket he, kind of thing yeah yeah he's not in that top three anymore um, you know Labuschagne is probably the the guy who's sort of taken that spot it'd be Williamson Kohli Smith Labuschagne um, and then Baba Razak from Pakistan um, we're I think we're going to see a very one-sided Ashes series. And I think if, if, if Australia get on a roll quickly in Brisbane, I think they'll end up demolishing England 5-0. Yeah. Um, and a final would probably save your job, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Lang is a very, very, very good coach. I mean, he's overseen Australia in one of the, probably one of the most darkest transition days mm -hmm. since uh, the Rebel Tours to South Africa when the side was very much split under Kim Hughes and Alan Border came on. Um, yeah. so I, I, I mean, you've got to give Langer and, and, and Payne credit for turning it around. And, and Langer is a very tough coach. Um, he, he's had to be with his coaching career. He had to turn around a very young Western Australian side. So yeah. we're going to see that sort of flow through. Um, I, I think what was made in the media is an overreaction. Um, having the assistants back, I think we'll, we'll see a very different Australia this time around. I, I think the ODI series has been a good example of that. Yes, they've lost the T20 series. Yeah. Um, you know, there were a few experiments in there. You could afford to experiment in that series. That's what it was about. Um, you know, there's no points on the line. There's no cup. There's no trophy. It, it, it's a chance to experiment. I mean, when you're bringing in a 30, uh, Dan Christian's 37, uh, when you bring it, it could be like 350 years right now and he'll still be playing <laughs> cricket. Yeah, yeah. That guy never goes away. Yeah, so it, it, it's a chance to try different things. Um, I, I think you'll see a very different piece in the ODI series. Um, Australia, much stronger at 50 over cricket. And then it'll be, it'll, we will, you know, it'll eventually sort of flow on from there. I mean, if you're looking towards India and England, um, you know, would you sack, sack Ravi if no. they lost? No, yeah, yeah. I mean the the whole thing. I mean it's it yeah. uh, the, the the rumor or rather the news uh, world started because of the whole feedback uh, from the players, right? So that that was where the uh, thing started. I mean, uh, I I absolutely love Langer. Like I I wouldn't change him even if anything. Like I I wouldn't. He's probably the best man to lead Australia into the next. I don't know how many years he wants to actually, because I don't think there's anyone suited to uh, replace him. But uh, uh, so that coming to you, like if because let's say the the reason why Langer was hired was to make sure that Australia was he, they came back into the good books of the fans. Uh, the cricketing level was increased, and all the other factors, and which he has done right. So as a uh, I don't know, selector or whoever decides that cricket Australia, whoever that could be, uh, if you were in their place. And um, now let's say the players are actually again, not against, but are not in favor of Langer. Would you uh, think about after the ashes, let's uh, take a pause mm -hmm. and look at other options because if the players are not happy, then 
the coach has to go. You can't replace the players, right? Yeah. So would you take that decision though? Like I, I know Dan said he wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. But as cricket Australia, would you if you were there and the players were actually um, not happy, hundred percent happy? Then would you take that plunge? Because what you asked Langer to do, he has already achieved. Is it time for the new chapter to begin? I think it might happen. Yeah, I, I won't disagree with this because see. at the end of the day uh, you want that you know the players are pretty much at ease they know what they are doing and they wouldn't like to be you know forced into something so uh, let's say you know even if australia win the ashes and the players do let's say maybe complain or reportedly complain complain that you know they are not happy with langer's way of functioning then it might just be uh, you know his time to go but uh, let's say uh, i'm not going to you know take all these things into consideration because for me you know when the team is winning and when the players are doing well and if the coach mm-hmm. wants you know something out of his players so i think uh, sometimes you know those things uh, are also that you know the players might not realize that the coach is saying something right but they think that you know what they are thinking is right the coach might be right you know in some things that yes you know you can do these x y z things rather than this abc because that might help you prosper that might help you uh, you know maybe gain uh, that might help you, you know prove to be advantageous for you maybe five five years from now or maybe three four years from now something mm-hmm. that you know probably a coach can look at a broader picture for a player or for a team however let's say if i am a selector i would give langer time till the india series next year because he was mm-hmm. appointed in 2018 for a four year contract till 2022 and he has himself said that you know beating india in india is his ultimate goal so mm-hmm. and yeah i think it should be because india last lost a series uh, at home in 2012 2013 against england that was 2-1 and since that you know india haven't really lost a test series uh at home and ha- they've hardly lost a couple of uh, you know tests also at home uh, as a part of series so yeah i'm going to give him time till uh, the india series because uh, that's very much important that's also going to be a kind of a revenge series for australia because they have lost to india twice at home and uh, mm-hmm. if they somehow are able to let's say maybe if land uh, langer under his tutelage is able to guide australia to a win in india i think that would possibly uh, help his con- contract get extended to the 2023 world cup because uh, yeah, I mean, if he can do that yeah um, absolutely what else is he going to do like make a you know, ice cream uh, cone you know, for everyone in cricket australia that's the series that came to india one oh, oh sorry no i take that the year like, before but then that I, i honestly don't count that one as well because it's it was one of those uh, yeah, yeah it, that was the b team Now that was the B team, wasn't it? In 2018. In 2018. Yeah, that was the B team. No, no, no. Like see, even even if that, even if it was see, you had only two players missing. You had Steve Smith and David Warner. I get, I get that you know they were the they are the best players. You know Australia has two of the best batsmen. But yeah, I think even if you want to call that a Australia B team, they did fight well. They did win the Perth Perth Test, and that was yeah, that is pretty good. good. Yes, yeah, so that was actually a good series. Well. But yeah, but I think that was actually a good series. Better. so i would like yeah. to i would like to call it a competitive series even if it was <laughs> no, no it was a very it was a good series though i will will yeah. see nobody expected uh, it to be that good a series because i i honestly thought that that could be the first time that australia is going to get white washed at home uh, it it had the recipe to be because india were really strong and they wanted to win and uh, it and australia was probably at the weakest so uh, yeah in all fairness that was a pretty good series that's a good shot Uh, for sure um, i think uh, just one last thing about uh, the uh, india england uh, australia pakistan all the xyz uh, factors coming in uh, just to uh, wrap it up uh, how do you guys see the india england series playing on because i think uh, england beat pakistan and then uh, india is beating sri lanka now different team different players probably same countries though yeah. and um, how do you see that because the team has been announced uh, england has announced their team it looks like a pretty solid team india uh, will probably have the same team as the uh, world test championship thing uh, do you we will go into much detail in the coming episodes but right now as of now uh, maybe just give us a overview of whether you think india can win yeah uh, i will start with uh, siddhartha yeah. yeah i think uh, i don't know you know to be very honest i don't know you know i really don't want to make that prediction because even it was in 2014 and 2018 also that i really predicted india to win however england did really well and they 
you know got so that's why we lost <laughs> if, if anyone's no, no, watching no, no. I, i did not think you know why india lost now because mr siddharth kulathi has done his part <laughs> so please don't predict any india win this time <laughs> but yeah i think uh, um, i think just uh, to just i think say the broader side of things england's batting is not that strong but uh, having the likes of root stokes and butler three of their mainstays it's going to be very difficult for india to get get rid of them and then you also have sham karan who did really well in 2018 so yeah um, i expect once again a competitive series with uh, you know i know what i'm about to say might just not uh, make the indian we'll just happy. We'll, we'll just probably but have I to think... cut him out here <laughs> <laughs> no but i i think you know i think england might just you know uh you know maybe probably you know when this series to one because i think england in their conditions are very strong and india we have seen that you know that the batsmen are still struggling against the swing bowling and uh, virat well, yes he is in good form uh, i i don't care about the fact that you know whether he has got those hundreds or not but i'm a uh, little unsure about our batting and it's uh, it's actually uh, this series is actually going to be uh, won by the team who bats well because the bowl on the bowling side of things you know both teams are very strong but the team that bats well on you know in these five tests is actually going to lift the trophy yeah i mean of course uh, then uh, the more important question i think uh, we all know you are not going to support england so uh, the more important <laughs> question how much grass would we be seeing on the first day uh, of the first test like would we see a rank turner or just like a grass field mine green top oh we're going to how see- how how likely are they? how likely is it <laughs> we we're, we're going to see a rank green top anything that gives you jimmy anderson and Stuart broad an advantage because uh um you know it, they they they're very much looked after and you know they've got to get Jim, jimmy through the series um uh, it'll be a rank green top absolute rank green top yeah. i was i was just hoping that you would say there would be a, it would be like a turning pitch like a chennai or a bangalore or mumbai or whatever that no ahmedabad that was like it would be going 90 degrees <laughs> it would be probably be swinging 90 degrees more than turning possibly but uh, yeah I, i can't see uh, much uh, dry uh, stuff on the pitch right yeah it will just like swing and just return back to the bowler in, in this case <laughs> but uh, yeah i think uh, we'll will definitely be touching a bit more on, on the india england series as well and a few other things in the upcoming episodes so but today i think uh, we'll call it a time uh, again uh, dan would you like to apologize to Mr. Yeah, uh, of course Shikadawan. apologies to my friend Shikadawan uh, of yeah. course, unfortunately we couldn't you know fit him in on the show tonight but uh, yeah. I think but this time he won't mind right he is already busy in Sri Lanka so he'll he's he's probably resting let him rest uh, we'll get him next week though I'm going to we'll get him next I'm week going to make a, and I'm going to make a montage of all the Shikadawan apologies that Dan has made and that's going to be broadcast live on <laughs> cricket spectacle <laughs> Yeah, I mean, of course we have to. We have to apologize. He's 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 captaining us side in Sri Lanka, leading the troops. He's going. He's doing great. A great job. Two nil up. What more do you want from Mr. Dhawan, right? So, yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, right now, guys, I want Hasha to um, give us a shout out because we're rec- recognizing Shikha Dhawan, and you know, uh, and we've had yes, he um, he said happy birthday to one of our former guests. I saw. So I, I'd like sort of yeah. do put in a good word to hasha and let's have him on the show to talk cricket yeah absolutely hasha will if you're listening obviously as uh, usual like you do every week uh, if you're listening this week as well uh, we would love to have you on the show <laughs> yeah. he's like the richie beno of india we've got to have him on he's an icon yeah Yeah, he's, he's a nice guy though. Yeah, I think he'll probably be very happy that we are spending more than five minutes on <laughs> appreciating how good he is. But <laughs> we uh, we can on that on that beautiful note though we can I think we can wrap it up and everyone stay safe and uh, enjoy the rest of your week and we will see you next week. See ya. Yeah. Bye for now, guys. Bye bye.